grapefruit! Bank! There are secrets hiding in the groceries you buy every day, so don't be fooled by these 10 fake foods you've been scammed into buying. You liar! Honey. Honey, really? These work hard in their day-to-day -day life. They pollinate the plants that create our oxygen and create a delicious byproduct in the process. So what would you say if we told you that the honey sold in stores is but a pale imitation of the real thing? Once again, human interference has changed something that many would consider a perfect creation. Most of the honey that you find lining your supermarket shelves is what scientists would call invert sugar syrup. Honey requires a delicate touch before it's made fit for consumption, and if any of these fundamental steps are neglected or changed, you wind up with something much different than the original product. Put simply, when you add things like excess sugar, corn syrup, and starch into honey, it's not honey anymore. Artificial honey was originally created by bakeries to stretch that much-desired flavor in off-seasons and in times of hardship. In doing so, some producers created a dangerous precedent. This means that most honey-flavored pastries, and even the genuine stuff coming straight out of the bottle is not held to the same standard as it once was. When you're buying honey, check the list of ingredients. It should be a very short list and start with a pretty self-explanatory ingredient, honey. All he could think about was honey. Bacon bits. I want real bacon. No, not this fake crap. Bacon. You can add it to almost every dish and it will complement the original flavors with a little salty, smoky punch. Bacon is a truly versatile ingredient that isn't always the easiest to keep on hand. It's greasy, costly, and depending on your preference, takes some time to prepare. In the face of these odds, companies have sprung up with bacon alternatives to deliver the much-craved taste without any of the hassle. Bacon is the greatest food in the world. However, would it surprise you to find out that most bacon bits don't even contain meat? It's true, most of these salad toppers are made with crunchy kernels of dried soy and doused in liquid smoke and other ingredients used to emulate the taste of bacon. Aside from being devoid of meat, bacon bits are often produced with heavy doses of nitrates and nitrites, which spell trouble for consumers focused on heart health. These ingredients have been linked to certain diseases and are found in copious amounts of bacon bits. Next time that you're at the salad bar, make sure you're getting actual salted and cured pork before you top that romaine with bacon bits. Most restaurants offer both varieties of the ingredient, and it shouldn't be hard to tell them apart. It should be the difference between looking at fresh meat versus a strange cereal-like mixture. This smells like band-aids. Coffee. Oh, you got this coffee? It's the first thing that many people go for upon getting out of bed in the morning. That's right, we're talking about coffee. It's estimated that the world consumes about 10 billion tons of the stuff per year. Can you imagine jumping into all those beans like Scrooge McDuck and his pile of gold coins? Chances are that if you're a true caffeine fiend, you can't always make it to your local Starbucks for your daily dose. This means that people are turning to instant options like pre-ground coffee and powder mixes. We hate to tell you, but if if you aren't watching the beans being ground in front of you, then you probably aren't drinking the coffee that you think you are. Coffee companies found themselves in hot water a few years ago when several publications did a study on the ingredients found in your favorite coffees. It turns out that many of these brands include strange additions like barley, nuts, legumes, and even miscellaneous vegetables. Haters will say coffee's just hot bean water, but with ingredients like that, it's more like drinking a sort of stew. Once again, money seems to be the sole driving factor here. It turns out that many companies choose to stretch their product with popular fillers rather than deliver a pure product. Really, the only way to make sure that you're getting 100% coffee is to buy the bean yourself. If classic coffee minus the additives are your vibe, try investing in a small grinder and find a brand of whole beans that you can vibe with. Grinding your own beans can be incredibly satisfying, and as an added benefit, you can make sure there's nothing in your cup but coffee. You get a medium coffee cream to sugars, so that's what you get, that's what everyone gets. First time here? Well, be like the cool kids and hit that subscribe button and never miss out. Thanks, you're the best. Baby Carrots
Have a carrot. What even are baby carrots? Is it a certain brand of carrot? Is it a carrot that's picked when it's incredibly young, resulting in its small size and strange name? Well, the truth is a little less spectacular than that. It turns out that baby carrots are simply regular carrots that have been processed and cut down into a tiny, appealing size. We're sorry to burst your bubble, but there is not an adorable genus of carrot that grows into that perfect tiny shape. We know, we're crying. Too. Instead, it takes a rather involved process to turn these carrots into their smaller counterparts. I fancy me some carrot. In the case of these strange little carrots, the idea came from sheer ingenuity. The idea was pioneered sometime in the late 1970s when farmers realized they were throwing away tons of carrots. Culls is a common term for carrots that are either undersized, misshapen, or otherwise unfit for store shelves. In order to avoid throwing this yield away, farmers chose to process them down and get rid of any irregular bits that consumers would otherwise avoid when choosing their produce. By shaping the culls to look like a smaller version of the regular thing, consumers went wild and started to buy these handy snacks by the bundle. So sometimes our food actually hides a bit of benevolent history. If it teaches us anything, it's that you should always be ready to make lemonade out of lemons. Or rather, make baby carrots out of, well, other carrots. Carrots? I hate carrots. Maple syrup. You're losing to the rookie. It's embarrassing. Despite not being France or Italy, Canada has actually contributed immensely to the culinary industry. I mean, come on, have you ever tried poutine? Set aside the cliché dishes that everyone would recognize as coming out of Canada, and you'll see that the Great White North is actually a country that knows good food. There are numerous foods associated with Canada. Wild game and fish are plentiful, but if there had to be one synonymous food associated with Canada, it would have to be maple maple syrup. Like with many of the foods on our list, there's a difference between pure and unfiltered maple syrup and syrups that have been processed. It turns out that most of the syrup found on American shelves is actually nothing more than high fructose corn syrup with maple extract added for flavoring. If you want the best of the best, you're going to want to look for maple sap as the sole ingredient on the label of your maple syrup. Much like honey, maple syrup has been tampered with beyond recognition. This doesn't mean that maple syrup can't be found on store shelves, just pay extra attention when selecting your brands. Unfortunately, Mrs. Butterworth's and and similar brands don't pass inspection. That disgusting brown goo dripping out of that tree! Let's eat it! Fruit juice. Who drank my apple juice? Fruit juice is one of the most popular drinks in the world. Apple, orange, pomegranate, mango, the possibilities are endless. With demand for a certain product comes those that would exploit the market. In the last 50 years, a shift has happened in the juice market. Whereas most juices used to be made solely from the fruits they represented, now all manner of ingredients are added to preserve shelf life and increase flavor. This means that a lot of the juices we drink today aren't really even fruit juice. To be considered a juice, the FDA doesn't even require the actual fruit ingredient to be contained in the drink. Instead, artificial flavoring and concentrates are enough to get a drink labeled as a fruit juice. Or what? This is a strange and sobering truth, as many companies have leaned heavily into marketing their drinks as alternatives to soda and other sugary beverages. In the case of many of these juices, there's really not much difference. They're all loaded with excess sugar, and a good deal of them get their flavor from convenient additives like corn syrup and artificial flavorings. It's a much different representation than what is advertised on the bottle. If you're planning to get the good stuff and only want real food represented at your dinner table, look for labels marked 100% juice and not from concentrate. These are usually good indicators that you're getting all the vitamins, minerals, and fiber contained in your favorite fruits. If you want to take it a step further, look for cold-pressed juices for the best fruit-to-bottle options. Did you drink my apple juice? Imitation crab. And we mortals have 
heard of the tale of the crab? Well, this one should be a bit of a no-brainer. We admit most people have seen this coming from a mile away, but there are some consumers who never knew that their California roll didn't actually contain crab. As is the case with many of the other items on our list, the appearance of imitation crab came as the result of high demand for the crustacean. In order to meet this demand, sushi masters and Japanese chefs alike looked for ways to evoke the taste and sight of crab without the associated cost. Well, if the meat inside our sushi isn't truly crab, then what is it? Well, it turns out that in most instances, the meat occupying that tube of rice and veggies is made from Alaskan pollock and other common whitefish. The cost and availability of these fish make them an excellent choice for cheap and delicious sushi. So don't fret next time you read imitation crab under a menu item at your local sushi restaurant. At least they're being forthcoming about it, right? I mean, the word imitation is right there in the name. Are you pitching the, uh, the tower, the seafood tower, to a, to a half crab? Whole wheat bread. Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? We're certainly on a slippery slope now. Found in bread boxes and on tables around the world is the strangely named whole wheat bread. What does it even mean to be whole wheat anyway? Well, it turns out that it's actually a bit of word trickery that companies have been using to mislead the consumer for years now. Whole wheat, in general terms, doesn't really mean anything. We'd always heard that white bread and enriched flours were bad, which was why most consumers choose a whole wheat alternative, almost without knowing what that alternative is. What's that? I don't know. Food manufacturers and bread companies list these enriched white flours as wheat flour, which allows them to make the strange claim that it's made wholly from wheat or whole wheat. Well, now that you know these companies' tricks, how can we make sure that we're getting the best product, or at least what we intended to buy? The secret, once again, is in the label. You're going to want to look for brands that advertise 100% whole grain. The list of ingredients should back up this advertising. If there's more than two or three, get that bread out of here. As with many products, the more steps required to process a food, the more risk of variables in the ingredients list. I have the tingle thing, just not for bread. Parmesan cheese. So they do say Parmesan weird. We've all seen them, those green cans of cheese that tend to haunt refrigerators long after their expiration date. They're a quick alternative to actually buying the cheese and grating it yourself, but at what cost? We're talking, of course, about Parmesan cheese. To those not familiar with Italian cuisine, this miracle product can elevate your average spaghetti night to the next level. The cheese powder comes out in a fine dust and manages to evoke the taste of Parmesan. But what are you really getting when you crack into a can? This version of the cheese is highly processed and is far from the real deal. You're a fraud. Margarine. This is my nightmare. <laughs> <sighs> Butter? What even is margarine, and who decided to name it that? There was a time when the only cooking oils that were used were fats from animals and oils from plants. In the 20th century, there was a significant push from food manufacturing companies to find an alternative to lighten production loads and bring a non-animal product to the table. Margarine is the result of such innovation. Margarine is created from hydrogenated vegetable oil that's used to mimic that taste and look of butter. With significant processing and a little bit of salt, it emulates the taste of butter without any of the mess. Unfortunately, as with many items on our list, processing food takes away a lot of the nutritional benefits, and margarine is no different. You can chalk this alternative up to another dose of pure oil and fat. So if you can't believe it's not butter, it probably isn't. This tastes like saddle soap. We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.